I just want to introduce to you um, the series that will take us through three quarters of the month of October, the Lord being our helper. And then next week, we'll get into the real, for the meat of the first installment of it. And then at the end of the month, I want you to help us. I'm going to ask your help on two things. One, at the end of the month, I want you to help us push OG Sunday. OG Sunday is where we're going to reach back all the way into our roots, and we're going to pull them out and, and refresh them and seek to give this generation a taste of our roots and where we come from, but repackaged in a way that's going to meet them where they're at. So pray for us as we do that. Pray that God will be with us. But it cannot be that the great hymns and the great choruses and the great traditions of the Lord's church that are not as important as the Word of God, but they are important. They are helpful. It cannot be that those die on our watch. God has given the church a rich tapestry to draw from. We are connected to generation upon generation of believing people going all the way back to one man in a desert in a place called Ur of the Chaldeans or Ur, one of the earliest cities ever founded. And he, he lives surrounded by idols. The rabbis say that Abram's father was an idol maker. So Abram would have grown up surrounded by gods you could touch and feel and hold and manipulate and put on a shelf and take down, but he would not, they would have never spoken to him. They would have never seen anything. That it was all us worshiping the God. But Abram began to have an experience with a voice. He didn't see it at first. The Bible says the Lord spoke to him and said, Abraham, I want you to leave all of this. I want you to walk away from all of this. I'm going to change your name. I'm going to change your identity. I'm going to deliver you from what you're in. I'm going to bring you to a place that I'm going to give your non-existent children. And while we're on the topic, they're going to be as many as the sands of the sea and the stars in the sky. I'm going to give them to you. And this man had to go sell his family on this, this Ancient billionaire had to sell his family. We're pulling up stakes. We're leaving everything behind. We're going to just start walking, and God's going to show us where we're going, and he's going to give the place where we go to our great-great-great-great-grandchildren. What do you mean our great-great-great-great-grandchildren? We don't have any children. Oh, don't worry about that, honey. I know you're 90, but they're coming. How do you know? I've been listening to a voice. Now, y'all, we have pills for that. We would straight medicate that away. I've been listening to a voice, but he stepped out by faith and obedience. The Bible says Abraham is the father of all who believe. He stepped out by faith in obedience to the voice, and the very next thing the Bible says is that when he set up his camp, after stepping out by faith and obedience, go read the story in Genesis. When he set up camp, the Lord appeared to him. And he built an altar there to the God who appeared to me. Now think about what a game changer that was. He had been surrounded by idols he had crafted with his own hands. He had learned the craft of making these gods, selling these gods, marketing these gods. He had learned how when you attack the enemy's camp, you make sure and take their gods because that's where all their confidence comes from. And so you take their gods away so that they are fearful, but now you have the strength of those gods too, gods that could be manipulated and pushed around, but they never showed up unless you put them somewhere. They never had anything to say unless you put words in their mouth and said that they said something. But when God spoke and Abraham stepped out by faith, he said, I'm following a voice that I've never seen. But by the time he set up his camp, he saw a God he had never made. He saw a God he could not contain. He saw a God who was faithful to his word. Just take the step of faith in your life and he'll appear to you. Now, 
That's what I mean when I say I'm going to introduce our series is really that's what we're talking about. I said to Brooke, as the worship died down, she said, we can skip the kids segment, which I'm very loath to do that unless the Holy Ghost just precludes any kind of speaking. And she said, we can skip the kids segment. I said, no, all I need is a few minutes to introduce this series. It is the will of God for you to, to say what God put in your spirit. And it was, clearly, it was the will of God for her to say that. I needed it. And I said, actually, in my mind, what happened today is the perfect backdrop to set our series in. Because the series is called Stranger Things. Now, I'm hoping most of y'all are saved enough that you don't know what I'm talking about. But some of us are just a tiny bit carnal, and we have Netflix. And for those of us that are just a tiny bit carnal and have Netflix, we may at least be aware. I'm not saying you should watch it. I'm just saying you may be aware of the phenomenon of stranger things. But just suffice it to say that it's set in the eerie surroundings of a town in the 1980s, just kind of a middle America, middle of the road kind of thing. And there's just some oddities about the town. Sometimes the shadows are a little too deep. Sometimes the quiet is a little too pregnant. There's just an eeriness about the town. And without giving a whole bunch of spoilers, but I'm talking to holiness people anyway, so you probably don't care. But without giving a whole bunch of spoilers, let me just say that, and this you can find on IMDb, so it's okay to say, there is a con there's sort of a, a tear, is the best way I could say it, or a portal in the time-space continuum and there's just a place in this town where you can enter into this alternate reality. And the thing about that alternate reality is you see all the landmarks of the town. You see all of the roads that you're used to seeing, the signs and the homes. But everything is just off. There's cobwebs everywhere. Instead of light, there's darkness. There's just a sense of decay. It, it looks a lot like the pictures of Chernobyl after Chernobyl has sat for decades just rusting by itself. It's got that eeriness to it. And it's just this alternate, there's something wrong in there. And there's some kind of beings that operate inside that upside down and they all share a hive mind they all think the same thing they all do the same thing they all say the same thing and the thought has occurred to me watching the church over the last couple of years over the last several years watching the church try to navigate issues that secular society has thrown at it I, uh, brother brother uh, Doug Wilson one of our Faithful elders sent a, a, a link this morning to a, a message, and I only got to hear about half of it while I was praying for today, but it was so in line with what God is talking to me about in Stranger Things because this preacher said we have to watch out for deadly uh, deadly platforms or, or deadly agendas that, that are given to us by the world and we adopt them as the church because we never stop to question what is thrown at us. You ever wonder why it is that we're all angry about one thing at the same time? For different reasons. Half of us are angry for one reason. Half of us are angry for the other. Nobody cares. All they care is that we've got something to be mad at each other about. And we're all mad at each other about it for a certain period of time and then it goes away and something else pops up. And now we're all mad at each other about that. And it's the same thing. It's kind of half and half, and it's all this division and contention, but then that goes away. Have you ever stopped to think that the reason that goes away is because things like the mainstream media and your politicians and, and, and the folks in Hollywood tell you what to be angry about and when to be angry about it, and then when they're done using that tool to divide us, I don't know, I think we need to sing the hymns again because I agree grew up on hymns that said division and contention are the adversary's plan but through the power of Jesus on hinds feet we can stand on high places 
with the Son of Man. We're not called to be like that. We should not be capable of being manipulated by those things. But we are. We're going to be mad at each other about whatever the fight du jour is. There are some preachers that are beginning to speak the word of God into this. And I'm thankful for them because it is calling out the fact that it never was about the masks and it never was about the racial issues and it never was. Yes, there are. The kingdom of God sets itself in opposition. You better believe it if there is racial injustice, if there is, is socioeconomic oppression, the kingdom of God is set in dire opposition to that. And any preacher who doesn't have the intestinal fortitude to cry aloud and spare not and say, you will not oppress, you will not use, you will not take your privilege for granted and push it on somebody else. Anybody who can't do that isn't worth their salt. But I am telling you today that we're going to be mad at it when and because the Holy Ghost is mad at it and our opinion about it is going to be based on the word of God and not on any platform. If a, if a political platform can carry me and make me feel comfortable then I have a major problem because that is the kingdom of this world and if one party suits me just fine then I have a citizen in this world and I'm not looking for a better country anymore. Stranger things. The central proposition of this series is just going to be this. What if we're all living in the upside down? Because that's what they call that realm. That eerie, creepy realm where everything is just a little bit off. What if we're the ones living in the upside down? What if we're the ones connected to the hive mind? What if we're all thinking the same things and outraged for the same reasons at the same time because there is a prince of the power of the air that is whispering divisive, contentious things in our ears that is causing us, as our youth pastor has told us at the end of, of his first message, that first of many that he preached here not long ago under the power of the Holy Ghost. And he said, please stop putting extra weight. He had the back packs up here and he said please stop putting extra weight on the next generation all I could think about was David saying to Saul I want to go fight this giant because there is a cause left in Israel but your armor's a little too heavy for me it doesn't fit me quite right I may not do it the way you do it I may not look exactly how you look but I stand for what you stand for I believe in what you believe in and I'm ready to die for what you're ready to die for so if you stand with me and let me be let me do it how I do it let me look how I look but just let me fight the enemy with you because I don't believe that the God of this world is strong enough to destroy a church that is standing on the word of God and cannot be taken in hand and made to be manipulated it's time that the church set the tone so we'll end with our beginning the series is going to be based on this first you can be seated for just like three more minutes these all this is Hebrews 11 yeah keep it up brother listen now I'm going to say something about that in a minute King David will mess you up if you got a minute and 15 seconds left on the clock. It's all right. I already talked to the committee. They could said I could have five extra minutes. Hebrews 11, 13 through 14 said, These all confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Talking about great people of faith in days of old who didn't get to possess the promises of God but they did see them. Abraham was the first of those. God said, I'm going to take you to a country. We're going to hear about it next week because next week's installment of Stranger Things by the grace of God is going to be Lot looked to the east. 
Now, if you don't know enough to know what that's hinting at, then go get in Genesis and read 10, 11, 12, 13. Read those chapters in Genesis and find out why I'd be talking about a man named Lot and a man named Abram. But suffice it to say that God told them, I'm going to give this to future generations. You're going to wander in it for a while. So these all confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Oh, Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. We may need to put that to a new melody and kick the beat up a little bit to take it to the next generation. But one thing I will not do is lie down on the job in this generation and be standing idly by and giving a golf clap of applause to a generation that is not ill at ease in their surroundings by the grace of God and God being our helper we will cry aloud and spare not we will weep between the porch and the altar we will humble ourselves and seek his face and pray and we will not allow a generation to become adapted like a lobster in the pot to the gently rising pressure of worldly ideals and worldly philosophies and worldly contentions and we're not going to fight about what they fight about because we're only going to fight for what he's fighting for if God says speak against it we'll speak against it but I've got news for you it's going to happen very soon that as Elijah begins to raise his voice in this generation and speak prophetically against what is happening it's not going to make the world uncomfortable we had our heyday with that the 70s, the 80s, the 90s we made the world feel all all kinds of awful for who they are what they stand for what they represent and and we we got in our we we got in a good round yelling at the world but from now on the bible says judgment begins at the house of god from now on when the preachers in thin ice and on dangerous territory it's going to be the church that's having to take a step back and say oh god search me and know Cleanse me, wash away from me all of these attributes that I have picked up from the world around me because it cannot be that the church can live in this present world and be at home if we are at home we have a major problem we have got to come to a point in this generation where everything we do everything we say how we operate where we go what we do is predicated upon the very clear proposition that I have no citizenship on earth someday yes the meek shall inherit the earth and by the grace of God I'll be there to celebrate that when it happens yes when he returns he'll set up his kingdom in the earth and we'll rule and reign with him yes the God of peace shall soon crush Satan under our feet the Greek there says repeatedly 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 every time he tries to get up but for right now I need to feel real homesick for right now I need to feel like Maranatha Lord Jesus your kingdom come your will be done get me out of the way usher in the kingdom yes there are some things about being a stranger if I can get our final uh, whatever y'all are going to do for, for closing music let's get it set up thank you so much y'all I don't even know what to say about the Maple family and this whole row of just Godly, anointed, Jesus-loving, humble, worshiping people. But I do want to say one thing. If you can keep doing what you're doing the way you're doing it, 
in the spirit that you're doing it, with the heart that you're doing it, hell cannot comprehend the trouble that is headed its way. Please don't lose that purity. Please don't lose that worshiping spirit. I don't believe you will because I believe you are who God created you to be. I believe you're somebody who knows who you are in Christ. So don't let the enemy lie to you. Your success will never be predicated upon your willingness to bow to the kingdom of this world. You absolutely do not ever have to sell your soul for one moment you are anointed and highly favored you carry within you the seed of revival in this generation there will be a harvest of souls that come from your ministry people will be delivered when you sing in secular stadiums just stay close to the Lord you're a stranger in a strange land but he's lifted you up and you're gonna get some hate and you're going to get some abuse from the world but don't worry about it they hated him too they can't help but hate you because of who you are in him strangers you can remain standing and we're just going to close out the prophet Isaiah said woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, because they have rejected the Lord, the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. And Colossians says this, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Beware! Watch out! Lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the base principles of the world and not according to Christ, who having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Christ Jesus has overcome the world. It really is true that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. It really is still true for every generation that it is not by might and it is not by power, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord. The race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, but the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Brother Edward, the right just run into it and they are safe and I want to thank God for people that run for the altar you know that they met brother Edward in the in the street ministry out among the the projects and all of that in Austin there are people all over this city that are hungry for the word of God and thirsty for a move of God we just got to go get them that's why our people are back on the street because there'll never be a generation that doesn't need a bunch of Elijahs running around saying, hey, 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 right behind me. Look right behind me at who's coming. Your king is coming. Your deliverer is coming. Your hope is coming. Your help is coming. But ye, that's y'all. But y'all, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Peculiar there means someone's special possession, someone's treasured, unique, like a Fabergé egg that there's so few of in the world that you guard it with your life. And your family has unlimited credit with the banks of the world just because somewhere in a safe is locked away that one little unique priceless item. That's what you are to him. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Brother Joe Allen, if you're still here today, would you please, 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 please find me at, or find Brooke 
and give us your information again. If somebody knows him, I have lost his information and I, I need to get in touch with him. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, I beg you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from earthly, fleshly desires, lusts that war against the souls, against the soul. There are some things about us that make us a little bit unique, and I told Brooke today this was perfect to set up our discussion because some of you have never been in a service before, certainly not a crazy Pentecostal service. But some of you have never been in a service before, in a Christian service before. Or maybe it's been years and years. And I'll acknowledge there are some oddities to what has unfolded around you. I don't know many churches where they would put money and effort into advertising the launch of a series and then the Holy Ghost shows up and kind of wipes the preaching off the map. But what a perfect example of what we mean when we say there are some things about us that are going to be odd because there are some special things about being in the church. We're a chosen generation. Not because of us or anything that we have done, but because of Christ and what he has done for us. We are royalty and we are a priesthood. We don't need anybody to stand in between us and the Lord God. Jesus has done that for us. We are priests to the living God. We can pastor our homes. We can evangelize our neighborhoods. We can baptize our friends. Somebody sent me a, a video of Sassy baptizing her friends in the name of Jesus in the swimming pool. That's not normal protocol, but I'll tell you something. That's what the Bible says is going to happen in the millennial kingdom. It says that it's going to be the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covering the earth like the water covers the sea and a little child will be able able to lead the congregation so maybe just maybe we're punching a hole through a good portal into the next dispensation stranger things just finish out with this story I sat on the porch of a gorgeous gorgeous hotel in uh Oh, it's going to, I wanted to say Trafalgar Square, but it's not Trafalgar Square. What's another big square in London that has it, it, you don't say it quite like it looks when it's written. I can't think of the name of it. Anyway, one of the big squares in London. I'll think of it in the middle of the night today. I'll holler it out and nobody will hear. And I sat on that porch with Dr. Willis and we just were enjoying watching people go by on that ministry trip I did there a few years ago and met up with him because he had kindly made the connections and, and it was just a great experience. And we just sat and talked and enjoyed ourselves and laughed and I guess we were probably a little noisy for the surroundings. It was very posh. I know how to act in public, I promise. I've been to nice places we were probably getting a little spirited and a, a guy that looked like James Bond had been sitting just like two tables away the whole night uh, playing high stakes poker and whatever boy he was I mean man and he finally walked over to us late at night maybe one or two in the morning and he said you're Americans huh and we said was it that obvious could you hear us and he said, no, I couldn't hear you. And we said, well, how, how did how'd you know we're Americans? And he said, listen to me, I'm going to tell you something that will help you out. He said, everywhere that Americans go on the entire planet, everyone knows they're Americans. And I thought, I thought he was kind of shooting a barb at us. And I said, oh, man, it's like that, huh? He said, no. He said, I love it. 
He said, I watched the way y'all move. He said, y'all move like the freest people in the world. He said, you move like you understand that you have the entire force of the United States behind you to say, don't wrongly imprison this person. Don't oppress this person. Don't do anything to them. He said, you act like folks that have got some something behind you. And he said, I envy it. And I like watching it in action. And I thought to myself, is it possible that I could live my life in such a way? I think the Bible says it is. That I could live my life in such a way that the world around me would go just from across the room. Not you're an American, but you're a member of the kingdom of heaven, aren't you? You're a Christian, aren't you? You're a believer, aren't you? You're one of those Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, tongue talking, born again, Jesus name preaching, dead raising, blind eyes opening, cancer cursing, high spirited praisers of the living God. Isn't it possible that we could live in such a way that the world would see the stranger things about us and want to come out from the upside down to the right side up? Because to them, it looks like we've got everything backwards, inside out, and upside down. But I've got news for you. This is where cancer goes to die. This is where marriages go to be restored. This is where addiction goes to be cast out. This is where sin and death lose their hold. We're not the upside down. That's the upside down. And we would do well to grab our children, grab our babies, our grandbabies, grab everything we care about and get out of the upside down and come into the kingdom of light. Would you praise him right now for just having brought us out of darkness? into his marvelous light.